Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Lawyer? Architect? Banker? Teacher? <laughs> Took a long time training for your job, didn't it? For me, it was a third of my life. 11 years, 10 months, and nine days, give or take. My name is Maya, Dr. Maya Schuldiner, and I'm a scientist at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel. To get to this position, I had to do an undergraduate and then graduate degree and spend six years of postdoctoral training abroad. It was a long, an often painful journey to fulfill a dream, a fantasy of being able to explore the secrets of life on a daily basis. My path to that of professionals in many fields. Nowadays, in order to become a leader in your field, it's essential to study for years on end and gain a lot of experience. Luckily for me, my journey was a successful one. Six years ago, I received a position as an assistant professor. Now, as an independent scientist, I would be in charge of leading a team of scientists, mentoring young students whom are just, like I was many years ago, beginning their own journey. This is my gang nowadays. But I still remember six years ago, that first day on the job, I walked into my beautiful new lab. It, it was completely empty at the time. I, uh, I couldn't get over the fact that I finally had my own office. I sat down in my cool executive chair and I closed my eyes. And for a moment there, I was in heaven. <laughs> Then panic ensued. I realized that I'd been running for so long to get this position that once I've actually landed it, I had absolutely no idea what I was supposed to do next. You see, my training consisted of endless courses on all different sciences, day in and day out, sitting on the bench, experimenting, reading hundreds, probably thousands, of scientific papers. But although I spent years of training, all of these things were unhelpful to me now. What I needed now were a different type of skill. I needed to know how to interview students and how to accept ones that would be right for me, how to match them with projects that would be most suitable for their passions and skills, how to empower them when they're down, how to give them great feedback when they've done well, how to manage a group, how to balance finances of a lab, which is like a, kind of a, like a small, uh, uh, like a small company. I needed to know how to network, how to present my science to the external world, and do all this while maintaining a sane work-life balance. That day, sitting on my executive chair, I realized that I may have been trained to be a great scientist, but I was never trained for a job that was just as hard, and that's producing great scientists. The academic system had failed me. It had left a giant gap in my education. It had neglected to teach me some of the most important skills required evidently now for my success. People skills. Unfortunately, my lack of knowledge in these skills was really quite generic. You see, educational systems, be them schools or colleges or universities, are really good at giving people the professional skills or hard skills required for them to succeed in one specific line of work. However, in most curriculums, you find lacking the complementary set of skills that are required for success in every job. And those are soft skills. Soft skills are a set of personal behavioral competencies. They include such skills as time management, team building, personal effectiveness, communication, and mentoring. It was once thought that soft skills were something you just had to be born with. You either had it or you didn't. And if you didn't, there was absolutely no point in trying to teach it to you. But after years of research, we now know that that's completely untrue. In fact, there are some simple set 
of well-worked-out tools that can take anyone's soft skills and make them better. And so despite the fact that it's been long understood that soft skills are essential for success in any field and that there are ways to teach them, they're nearly never on the formal curriculum. And this leaves students to spend many frustrating years trying to pick these skills up by themselves. Moreover, it leaves many otherwise wonderful people to fail during their studies or while trying to set up their independent career path. For example, it's now known, and there are many studies showing it, that during hiring interviews, the interviewers pay much more attention to a person's behavioral skills than to their actual technical knowledge. So this was what I was missing. I was missing soft skills. And as I set out to try and learn them myself, I also came to the conclusion that I don't want my students to have to go through the same process as I did. I want them to reach this point in life so late in the game and realize that they didn't have what they needed in order to succeed. I realized that I want to give them new tools for their toolbox on their way to success. I decided that I want to create a course on soft skills for PhD students. Luckily for me, our graduate school wasn't only supportive in creating this course, they literally pushed me into it. They gave it formal credit, they integrated it into the formal curriculum of PhD students, and you should have seen me on the day I realized this would become a reality. I, I was so excited, I was nearly doing cartwheels on the lawn. It, it was like a dream come true. This is something that I'd so much wished for myself to have had. And now I could be part of making it a reality for the students to come. I am now in the third year of teaching a scientific soft skills course to PhD students. Every year, more than half of all eligible students enroll for this course, which just goes to show you the hunger that these students crave for learning these super important skills. But for me, what is much more exciting is how at the end of every lesson and at the finish of the semester, students come up to me and say that this course has been one of the most influential courses during their entire academic training. I don't want to give you a grocery list of the lessons that I teach. But I do want to give you just two examples of types of lessons that I think really explain why it's so important for students to learn soft skills. The first type of lesson is focusing on allowing students to create a healthy and balanced work-life environment. This is really important because if you think about it, nowadays, often people are considered more dedicated to their work and even sometimes more successful, if they simply spend more time in the office. Unfortunately, this has created a society where people are stressed all the time. They neglect their families, and ironically, they're often less productive and less efficient than they could have been. I have three children. I have a husband whom I love. I have a family and friends. I have hobbies that sustain me happy. I don't want to be married to my work. I can tell you more importantly than that, that it in no way reflects how passionate I am about my science, and luckily for me, hasn't reflected on my ability to succeed. And so how can one balance a healthy personal life and still be able to succeed in their work? The secret is really quite simple. You have to learn to manage your time. Effective time management has been shown time and again to make the difference between individuals that are successful and those that are not quite so. For many years, there have been methods and tools out there that allow any person to increase their time management skills and productivity. But these tools are nearly never taught in academic environments. When I teach them to my students, what I hope to be able to achieve is that these students will be just as successful maybe more so, but at the same time, be able to go back to their lives, take care of themselves, spend time with the people that they love, and come back to work rested, regenerated, enthusiastic, and creative. A second type of 
many lessons are dedicated to presentation skills. This is because in our age, it's not enough to be able to do your job well, and it really doesn't matter what that job is. You also need to know how to communicate it effectively. Effective communication is important for so many aspects of our work. We often don't even stop to think about it. It can be a short elevator pitch or a long professional talk. It can be providing feedback for your peers or your mentees, giving back to our society by sharing information with our community, even for giving a TEDx talk. In order to know how to effectively communicate, you need to know how to drive home one clear message, how to present your data in a way that's clear and engaging, the do's and don'ts of a PowerPoint presentation and how to use your body language effectively. Many people have asked me, well, why spend time, why spend students' time learning this? I mean, they're so clever, they should be able to pick this up by themselves. Well, we all know how important communication skills are for success in any field. Leaving students to pick this up by themselves creates enormous gaps in people's competencies. And often, these differences don't reflect their inherent capabilities, but rather are just a measure of their history of training or how much time they've focused on this specific issue. Think back at your first interview or sales pitch or lecture. How scary was it? <laughs> Did it succeed or fail? Wouldn't it have been awesome if you had somebody to mentor you in the process and tell you how to do it such that it would be the most effective? In a world where one interview can determine the fate of a candidate, wouldn't you want to know how to be able to give the best talk possible? I see my students later giving talks at department seminars or conferences and I'm so proud of them. Their talks are clear and engaging, and I know that they're going out to life better equipped to excel. And so I think you've understood that in my eyes, soft skills should be an essential part of every curriculum. But more generally, we should stop to think of how it is that so many educational environments spend an enormous amount of time teaching many people things that they don't really need to know, while spending very little time teaching everyone the life skills that are absolutely essential for their success. How come the teachers are so much, sometimes so engrossed in their teaching material that they forget that real success in a course is not about getting a hundred in the test, it's about going out to life better equipped to succeed. After all, education is really merely only a means to an end, living a fruitful and productive life to enable our society to grow and prosper. Often, people feel like they're merely a drop in the ocean, unable to make a real change. But there is one age-long way by which individuals have been able to make a change. And this is through education. By educating tens of students each year on soft skills, my drop is making big waves. Yours can too. Each of us will spend time training people in the classroom or out. If you can think, if one person in each institution will spend the time to integrate real-life skills required for success into a curriculum that didn't have them before, think how many lives you could be touching. Think how many people you could be helping. Think how together we could be building a better future where people are happier, are more fulfilled, are more successful, and yet have time to do the things that matter most. Are you giving your trainees everything they need to succeed? Will you be the next to make a change? Thank you.